start with. So in front of me, I have a program employee which needs to be serialized. Need to be serialized means I have to write the state of the object to a file or to transmit over the network. To do this, the state of the object means I have to store the state means employee object, the name and bank account in a serialized form. So for this, we always refer to object serialization algorithm defined by JVM. So let's start to save the state of the employee. We have to implement serializable interface using this interface will give a hint to the compiler. The employee class has, is a special class and its state can be saved in a file system or can be transmitted over the network using object serialization algorithm. Okay. So this class uses two field string name and the integer the bank account okay so these are two forms serialized and deserialize i have to define a two method serialized so what serialize will do it will write the state of an object to this file okay so so let's just write the state of an object. So let's run this program. So I have saved the state of an object in employee.ser file. So ser is a just an extension. You can give any extension here. Okay. So once you deserialize it, deserialize uses object input stream. And finally, we can read an object. You can see name is YouTube user and bank account is 1422-3423. Okay, so this is a very basic program. So let's go one by one. So it provide, so suppose you don't, don't want to save the state of one of the member variable. So for this, we can use transient keyword okay so I don't want to save the bank account number so I can very well use transient keyword so if I again run this program so let's first serialize it Okay, so I have saved the state employee.ser. Now I will deserialize it. So you can see the bank account number is not retrieved because it has not been stored in a serialized form because of the transient keyword. Okay this keyword. So let's bring back to the original state. Next important stuff is the serial version UID. Okay, so this is this plays a significant role in serialization. So let's see how. So let's again one more serialize Okay, so I have saved the state of an employee in employee.cell file and at any given point I have changed the UID, serial version UID. Okay, and if I want to deserialize it 
can see uh, invalid class exception has been thrown incompatible stream okay so this act as in signature to the employee class this serial version uid okay so this can maintain the integrity of the file so next come how serialization can be used in inheritance okay so let's take one more class one more class address which extend employee let's first remove this okay the same process serialize and deserialize so i want to save the state of an address okay but this address doesn't implement serializable interface what it parent class implement a serializable interface okay so can we serialize address so let's check out so let's say youtube user 1 okay so i am creating an address object and saving in a address.sir file using object output stream finally i am writing the state of the object object is address so let's run this program so i have written the state of the address in address.sir now what i will try to i will try to deserialize it so you can see that i can retrieve the name youtube user 1 okay so when a base class extend implement a serializable interface then the child class doesn't have to implement the serializable interface okay so let's assume that now now let's do the opposite okay so now address implement serializable and the address extend employee but employee doesn't implement the serializable interface so can i save the state of the address as well as the employee so let's see so first serialize it okay so i have serialized address.sir now i will try to deserialize it okay can see a uh, exception has been thrown third use case is how to use serialization in singleton so to make it sing a singleton class first step we have to do a private constructor once we do a private constructor we have to provide a static method of the instance then we have to give a getter which will return an instance okay so this is the basically same process serialize the main method is serializing and deserializing the singleton object so let's run this program so once i run this program i can see two different hash code for the same serialized object is been given here okay so once i serialize it i am printing a hash code of the object singleton serialization and when i deserialize it 
I am printing the hash code of the singleton serialization object. Okay. So you can see I got two different hash code. Okay. So it's not the same object. So it has created a new instance one more time when I try to deserialize it. So to overcome this problem, you have to provide a read resolve method in the singleton class. So once you give this method and when it will try to deserialize it, it will try to resolve the default serialized object instead of creating the new one. So if I run this program one more time, I can you can see I got the same hash code for both one for serialized and one for deserialized. So both are same. So thanks for watching the video <laughs> and do don't forget to subscribe to the channel and do let me know if you have any queries or concern. I will try to answer over the comment. Thank you.